Welcome everyone to this session about the Qt6 book um, with the subtitle Learning by Reading because that's what I want to discuss today. Um, I will be available for Q&A during this talk in the chat but also in the speaker's lounge afterwards. So, so feel free to, to ask me anything that you feel you want to ask. So first, a few quick words about myself. Um, my name is Johan Tillin. Um, I've written Foundations of Qt Development a really long time ago, uh, back in Qt 4. something, 4.2, 4.6, those times. Um, I've also spent the last 25 years working with Qt in, in various contexts. So, so starting off at, at, at least BitSim, Qt was a big part of what I was doing. Uh, I did a short stint at the Qt company when it was called Qt Development Frameworks and was a part of Nokia. Uh, and then I spent a decade with uh, with Plagicor building infotainment systems for various OEMs, partly based on Qt. Uh, I was also partaking in open source efforts around automotive infotainment, such as Geneva and later on automotive grade Linux. Currently, I, I work with a startup called Eperoto, but I also run my own consultancy company, CodeRise, as well as a conference called Foss North, if you ever want to, to visit Sweden. So today I'll go through a bit of background. Why, why a book about Qt and QML, uh, and an overview of the actual contents, where we're heading, and, and where you is needed. I, I need input to, to make it good, and I need to understand where the readers want the text to go, to, to come somewhere. And then, of course, we, we end on a Q&A session. So how do you learn best? There, there are so many ways. Um, for, for Qt, there is this amazing reference documentation that actually got me hooked back in the day. Um, there's a plethora of video tutorials of, of different times and uh, and with different focus, so to speak, if it's for beginners or if it's for something specific. Um, I also included a copy of, uh, of the Basic 2 book, uh, which is something that I used a lot. So, so back in the pre-internet days, that was how I learned. You, you basically read the reference manual until it fell apart. And uh, maybe you picked up something new on each iteration. So, so you just kept on hitting it and learning more and more. Um, of course, I, I believe that the code in the middle is one of the more important parts. So, so you have to learn by writing code yourself. That's actually key. Um, so, so to some extent, you also need a project and a goal. So today I'm speaking about this, the Qt6 book. Uh, the subtitle is a book about QML because that's the focus. Um, the reason behind that focus is really that uh, that the C++ parts of Qt haven't changed that much. Usually you have API compatibility with minor changes all the way back to, to Qt3, Qt4 days. Uh, what, what changed a bit is, is how the modules are split and, and how they depend on each other. So for instance, you can build applications without widget support these times, um, things like that. Um, so the focus is on QML and, and the new stuff, so to speak. Um, I included a link to the official build, which is on, on Q.io, uh, but also a link to, to the GitHub repository where you find the actual sources. So I wanted to start with a brief history. So, so the QML book was, was something that me and Jürgen uh, came up with when building large scale infotainment systems uh, with Pelagicor. So the focus was Qt5. Uh, Pelagic was started during Qt4 days, but we, we quite shift, quickly shifted into to Qt5 and QML when it became available. The work in the QML book for, for Qt5 has been sponsored by Pelagic or the Qt company and Felgo over the years in, in various ways, uh, contributing content, contributing reviews, uh, paying for time and so on. And this is something that we're greatly appreciating. Um, for Qt6, uh, we've actually extended the team, so we also have Cyril with us. Uh, and right now we're in the middle of, of porting to Qt6 and updating the, the contents to, to modern practices, as well as extending it with new contents so that we cover Qt6. Uh, and we get a lot of help from the Qt company, both in making this possible from a time perspective, but also when it comes to, to reviews and feedback and so on. 
So this is something that we're extremely uh, appreciative of. So let's look at the, the book. The, the structure that we've decided to go for is, is really to, to take you from the crawling stage up until the running stage. And in order to, to learn to run, you need to learn to crawl properly. You need to learn to walk properly. You need to, to start practicing running. Um, and you do this in different ways. So when you crawl, it's, it's almost a linear thing. So, so the benefit of a book is that it has a beginning and an end. The weakness of a book is that it has a beginning and an end. So, so when you crawl, you have to go through a certain number of steps in order to understand what you're doing. Um, once you, you're through that stage, you can start walking, which means that you can start exploring topics in an order that makes sense to you. What do you use? What do you uh, find interesting? And, and this is, to me, where it becomes really exciting. I, I mean, university is, is to some extent also built this way, at least when I studied. And I love the third, fourth and fifth year when you could really start walking and running. Um, and running is very similar to walking. It, it's just that the, the topics are even more separate and even more further apart and to some extent also wider. So, so there, what the, the Q6 book offers is really a taste, but not the full experience. Um, and this is greatly complemented by the reference documentation, which in my mind is, is a lot about the walking and running parts where you can look things up independently, but there isn't really a beginning and an end. So how does these different stages look? So, so in the crawling, we, we introduce Qt and QML. What is it? Why is it? What, what do you use it for? Um, we also do the, the necessary installation and hello world part, where we set up the tooling and ensure that the tooling works. Uh, then there are basically an introduction to Qt Creator, because that's the easiest way to get hooked into the tooling so you don't have to set up a completely separate development environment. Um, and then we spend the rest of the time on a crash course introduction to, to QML and Qt Quick, where we go through the syntax, the elements, how components work, transformations, positioning, layout, input, animation, states, transitions, all of the basics that you need to understand to really fundamentally get what it's about, how to do declarative stuff, how to, how to make dynamic user interfaces using these techniques and and also how the different playthings that you have at hand so that you don't build it inefficiently use transitions and states and animations on properties rather than expressing that through bindings all of yours on your own so to speak uh, which is also beneficial for performance and things like this uh, this is a linear process. So basically you go from what is cute to understanding QML on a language level. And then we come to the, the walking stage where it's about learning how to use it. So from a high level perspective, we go through the modules, um, sometimes multiple of them at once, sometimes only part of them. But uh, we try to do a walkthrough. So, so we look at Qt Quick Controls. How, how do you make user interfaces using the standardized components? How do we share a code base between the different desktops and even over to mobile? Um, we have a look at the model view uh, classes and elements that's available. How, how do you go from something extremely trivial like a, an index list into parsing XML that you download from the internet and, and displaying it? Um, we dive into the Canvas module, uh, which is great for reusing contents from uh, that you're used to on the web. So graphing modules, other stuff that you might find out there. Uh, we have a look at effects. Um, this includes both shaders and particles, but basically leveraging the fact that we're running on, on hardware accelerated graphics stack. We look at multimedia, we look at networking, we look at how you store things. Um, and after that, we come to the more advanced topics, the running part, which are more separated. It's, it's harder to, to, to see the red thread between them. The, the walking part, you can really read from beginning to end um, and, and sort of see a store line through it. Uh, and here we deal with things like dynamic QML. How, how can you replace part of your user interface? How can you load parts of your user interface from a file that isn't really defined when you start? Uh, we also have a deeper look at JavaScript. 
because QML and JavaScript are, are very similar. So it's a usual misconception is that it's the same language, which it's not. So we'll look at how JavaScript ties into QML. Um, and then the, the obvious one, uh, C++ and QML, how do they interact? How do you extend your QML working set or tools with C++? Uh, which I think is a very important topic, but also a very complex topic if you come from, let's say, the web front end or designer perspective and fall into QML. Um, we also spend time with the Qt for Python module and, and we focus on QML, uh, how to, how to bridge the gap between the two languages. How do you do signals and slots? How do you share properties? How do you provide models? Uh, all of these things. How, how do you build? the bridge for these various topics from Python to QML and the other way around so that you can build one system. Uh, and then we actually show how can you use a QML or a Python module that uh, that is downloaded using the pip um, and interact with it through QML. So, so how to wrap something existing into a QML-like interface so, so that you can reuse it. Um, because to me, that's one of the, the biggest benefits of Python that you have this extraordinary library of available components integrating everything. Um, so, so we have a look at that. This is the current state. So, so, so where are we today? So we're constantly moving. We, we released the zero point something. I, I call it 0 0.9 at the moment, but we released the zero point something quite recently when 6.2 was, uh, was announced and, and we're heading towards 1.0. Um, the question then is, what is 1.0? So, so what we want to ensure is that we're technically correct. That, that's 1.0 to us. So, so we try to port all the examples over to CMake in Qt 6, uh, which is something that, uh, that we're doing in, in lockstep with Qt. So, so some application generators weren't updated in the 6.1 times, which means that we, we are slightly behind on updating them and still rely on QMake for those examples. Uh, we're also working on improving quality and moving to, to best practices. So, so we've spent a lot of time, or Cyril has spent a lot of time with QML Lint. Uh, but we're also getting a lot of feedback from the teams at the Qt company, which is something that, that we greatly appreciate. I mean, this is, as, as a writer, that, that's really the best thing you can get. So feedback from the people actually creating what you write about, because it really confirms that we, we understood what it's meant to be used for and how it's meant to be used. Uh, I also want to bring up, because we, we've, we have uh, bugs being reported or issues being raised that we don't provide a PDF or an ebook. Uh, and the constant moving is the reason for that. So, uh, so in my experience, once we release a PDF, it might actually start circulating and having a life of its own. Um, and since the text is not out of quality where we're happy with it yet, um, this is something that we don't want to pr produce at the moment. Uh, it's definitely something coming up, but we want to reach mature state first. So, so that's the background to that. And that, that's the reason for not simply flipping the switch and, and, and start building it. So, so where are we heading then? So, so we want to increase the quality and make sure that, well, basically no linter warnings and everything works and, and the developers at the Qt company are happy with the way we, we expose and, and describe QML and Qt Quick. Uh, but there are also a number of modules that we want to cover that, that we missed. So, so for instance, we're, we're covering the canvas module, uh, but not the shapes module. So, so we want to dive into shapes and show how to do, uh, how to do freeform graphics when you're not using web technology. Um, we also want to dive into to some of the new stuff. So, so Qt Frames use is, is one topic that's very close to heart for, for me, since, since I have a, an embedded background and I'm an electronics engineer. So, so the smaller the, the, the ECU, the, the better for me. Um, but we also want to dive into Qt Quick 3D, where, where we have lots of exciting uh, technology development in, in recent years, and, and also how to mix 3D and 2D into, into these really immersive user experiences. Um, there is also a change on the tooling side. So, so Qt Design Studio is coming here. This is a book for developers, just to be clear. But QML sort of bridges the gap between developers and designers. Uh, a bit like web front end, so to speak. So, so as a designer, you can actually dive into CSS and, and, and do stuff. And, and 
Cute Design Studio tries to address the same topic. How how do you work with QML as a designer with a designer workflow and and getting all the graphical assets extracted and put into your QML scene and then how do we bridge that over to the developers and 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 blow life into into this final product. Um, and we're also heading towards what what I call printed book quality, um, and this is about language, language, and language. Um, so, so currently we we have a French speaking Belgian, uh, a Swedish speaking Swedish guy, and uh, <laughs> a German guy speaking German, obviously, um, writing this book. And I, I think if you if you spend a few minutes in each chapter, you can tell who wrote what. Um, we we all have our our mistakes, and none of us is a, a native English speaker. Uh, and this is something where we're also targeting to to address over time. So so bear with us there. And all the typos and grammar fixes are more than welcome. We we try to learn from them. Um. And, and then the question is, where where do you come in? So so of course, spread the word. Help us by making suggestions. Did did we miss a module? Is it something that that's too weak, too too little describe or or not deep enough? Um, also, report issues. We we do make mistakes, and and this is a port from Qt five. So so some of the stuff might not be um, be sort of applicable in a Qt six world. We we try to weed it out, and we we've done a couple of iterations to do so. But any issues you find, please report them on on the GitHub, uh, and also contribute contents. Please do so. Uh, it's always easier to just get a merge request for for typos than than having someone describe where the typo is, having to go in and fix it. Um, but first and foremost, I mean, we're writing this so that you can learn Qt. That that's what we want. So so we're so happy with all the help we get. Uh, but even if you don't feel that you can contribute or have suggestions, use it to learn Qt. I mean, having readers is the purpose of of writing this, and and just knowing that people use this to to learn to become developers and learn to do cute uh, based user interfaces is is an amazing feeling i i also want to well it's it's not an excuse but it's it's an explanation we given that we're all living busy lives um the bugs for for the qml book so the qt5 book um are usually processed in batches uh, and I imagine that this is the case here as well, even though I try to be more active here. Uh, it's a reality of life that, that sometimes you're really busy for a couple of weeks and, and then you do a batch of bugs. So so don't be overly disappointed if, if a suggestion or a reported issue just stays unhandled for a week or two. Uh, we see it uh, and, and we address it as soon as we can and, and all contributions are, are more than welcome. So that's roughly the outline. Um, I'm here for a Q&A. Uh, I'm in the chat right now, hopefully, if everything works. Uh, and I'll also be in the speaker's lounge for the next 30 minutes where, where I think we can actually speak to each other as well, if you, if you want to ask your question that way. And uh, otherwise, you can find my contact details in the actual book. So, so feel free to, to go there, drop me a mail, drop me a GitHub issue, something. Um, I'm here for you and please reach out. All, all feedback is good feedback. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the Cute World Summit.